Each year, almost 4,000 persons die in traffic accidents in Texas, and about half those fatal accidents involve a drunk or drinking driver. The Southwest Research Institute recently conducted a test at a San Antonio racetrack to measure the effects of alcohol on drivers. The test was initiated by the San Antonio Association of Insurance Agents to demonstrate the hazards of driving after drinking. The drivers, all professional racers, were first tested to determine their driving ability while sober. One, two, one. We asked John Clark, the director of the test, about the exact procedure followed in the experiment. What actually are the drivers being asked to do? We asked them to go around the course four times. We have seven pylons set up on each side of the course. And they're asked to travel the course at an average speed of 30 miles an hour. They have to maintain speed through the pylons. And as they're driving through, I call off the number of pylons they're supposed to go around, either one or two or two, one. On. Do you think the test was made too difficult? Uh, we've seen the sober part so far, and the drivers were having a tough time uh, doing that. Well, we wanted to make it uh, as difficult as we could so that it was just marginal with a uh, sober driver. Uh, if you make it too easy, then it's hard to discriminate uh, when you get uh, a slight bit of alcohol. During the sober part of the test, drivers made the rounds of the course with few errors, with little variation from the prescribed speed of 30 miles per hour. We talked with one of the drivers, Tommy Davis, as he finished his round of driving while sober. Tommy, you've not had anything to drink yet, have you? No, sir, I have not. Were your reactions quick enough to suit you on the track a few moments ago? I think so. The car owner stares, though, it don't handle just right to me. Uh, I think if they let some air out or something, they'd do a little better. Front were, tire. were any of the uh, instructions uh, difficult or hard to follow? Uh, he gets a little bit erratic in there a little bit. Uh, other than that, they're all right. You can follow them pretty easy. How much uh, do they have scheduled for you to drink uh, right now? I believe it's 15 ounces. Of beer? No, liquor. 15 ounces of liquor. Yeah. Good. We'll talk to you again after that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in addition to the driving test, the racers were also given a response reflex and a written test after these tests established the five drivers physical and mental conditions and driving ability while sober the researchers brought out the liquor the five men were each given enough liquor to bring their blood alcohol level up to 0 0.10 percent on the breathalyzer the legal point of intoxication under texas law the breathalyzer and reaction tests were carried out by department of public safety technicians when the breathalyzer indicated the drivers were legally drunk, the battery of tests were again administered. We talked with driver Tommy Davis again after he finished his driving test while legally intoxicated. Tommy, you went around the track one time, and then they gave you a few of those bourbon and 7-Up drinks, and you went around again. Did you notice any difference uh, in your reactions the second time around? I think I was a little bit sharper the second time than do the you first really? time. Really do. Tommy and the other drivers claimed throughout the test that they felt fine and that they thought they were doing fine on the test. But these statistical results indicate their driving ability deteriorated steadily as the alcohol level increased. The sober Tommy went through the course with only one sequence error. He hit only one pylon and deviated only once from the prescribed speed of 30 miles per hour. With 0.11% of alcohol in his blood, however, and that's just above the level of legal intoxication in Texas, he negotiated the course with eight sequence errors, hit no pylon, but made 15 speed errors. Then with 0.15% alcohol in his blood, Tommy made 30 sequence errors hit one pylon and made 23 speed errors. And Tommy did very well compared to the other drivers. One driver with his alcohol level at 0.16% made 40 sequence errors, hit eight pylons and made 30 speed errors. He virtually came to a stop many times while going through the course. If he had maintained the 30 mile per hour speed limit, the researchers feel he would have knocked down every pylon. 
Drinking had obviously made all five drivers incapable of handling their cars safely.